morning, everyone. I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune for the 19th day of December, 2018. Well, 19 re reduces to one, so we're looking at new beginnings today. Maybe some unity, some wholeness on this Wednesday. Wednesday is a Mercury day, so it's about communication, intellectual pursuits, and things like that. So maybe we'll have a some new beginnings in terms of our communication with others today. Maybe set a new course. Maybe talk to someone you haven't talked to in a while. Or maybe someone's going to call you that hasn't called in a while. It is the holidays, you know, so anything could happen. Anyhow, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do next week. I think I will probably take Monday and Tuesday off and, and do a reading on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, since people will probably be spending time with their families and, and hopefully not on YouTube. <laughs> but you never know. Uh, or maybe folks will be traveling on Monday or something. So... But then I thought, well, not everybody celebrates Christmas, so why wouldn't I do it on Monday and Tuesday? So you never know. I might. I might go ahead and do them on those days. Maybe just take Tuesday off. I don't know. We'll see. We just start our alone over here, my husband and I, so where we live, so we don't uh, plan anything. But I think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to think I'm going to not do a ham this year. Usually I do a, a ham on, on the, over the holidays. Um, Yule is coming up here. I think I, what I'm probably going to do is uh, maybe buy a roast. Maybe a tri-tip roast or something like that. That might be nice for something different. We've got potatoes, you know, from the garden and green beans and carrots and also in corn, all sorts of things, you know. So the only thing I really have to buy is the meat if we're going to do that. So we did turkey for Thanksgiving and I and I always freeze the, re the rest of it. So I think I even still have some. But uh, we just thought maybe doing something different than the ham might be might be fun. We haven't had a roast in a while, so I said to my husband, I said, what about a roast? He perked up. Said, Ooh, yeah, let's do that. So that's what we'll do, and we'll binge out on Netflix or something like that. If the weather's good enough, we'll do a walk. It was nice this morning. It wasn't really icy or anything, even though we had some rain yesterday. Usually we're a little concerned about going out in the morning because it's it's pretty icy. Well, I think that I have shuffled enough. I had this all ordered, so that's why I had to shuffle a little extra today. Otherwise, you end up with uh, a run on cards sometimes, like three, four, or five. With the same suit. It's like, oh, well, clearly I didn't shuffle enough. <laughs> so let's count 13. Well, I got the world. This is the 21st part of the Major Arcana. Called the universe in some decks. There's a sense of completion. You see the two lemnus gates at the top and bottom. Or infinity symbol, if you want to call it that. But it shows the endless cycle that we're in. Did we begin as the fool and end as the uh, androgen in the center of the picture? In complete unity and wholeness and completion. So, I mean, for today, even though it's a three, 41 would reduce to three, and that's a catalytic number in a sense, you know, we have endings and beginnings there, don't we? With the universe. 
or the world. <laughs> I don't usually use the Rider Waite in, in my other readings. And so I'm accustomed to other names. I'm, I, I call this the universe card, but in this one, it's the world. But, but it's basically the synthesis of all that we've learned and, and, a, and all the skills and knowledge and awareness and understanding of who we are. You know, we focus into form and as the fool and we have complete undeveloped potential. And along the way, it's almost like we work our way back to awakening of our own source presence within to understand that, that we really are spirit inhabiting this body for just a time to go and explore and learn and develop and, 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 and all of that on behalf of source, on behalf of the creator. Well, as the creator, basically, not on behalf of, because everything I believe is the creator focused into form. But the wreath appearance is about our reward, the reward of awakening into who we truly are. And hopefully we, the other, the other thing about this, it also indicates a reincarnation cycle, a never ending one. And I don't think that that's actually what will happen ultimately. Ultimately, we will stop reincarnating and we will start incarnating at will. Uh, but right now, uh, hopefully we're in the ascension process and we're moving out of this reincarnation cycle and into something else, you know. But what we have here is essentially the triple goddess manifested, all elements coming together in unity. So is something coming to completion today for us? Is uh, Are we beginning a new cycle today? Uh, being the, you know, being, being a number for new beginnings today, um, I have to wonder if maybe that's what we're, we're going to uh, experience is, is, are we coming to an end of something? You know, when you look at the world, I, I mean, you can look at it in terms of society or the world itself. Something greater than what we began with. So you could look at that as a collective uh, understanding. Maybe we've come to completion on something where collectively we now understand something to be so. Uh, it could be simply about projects in your life, or maybe a job is coming to an end, or maybe you're transitioning into another phase of life. You know, maybe you're retiring here uh, soon, and uh, uh, you're, you're definitely shifting into a completely different phase of life. I can tell you this, okay? It's uh, not, it's not, retirement's not for the faint of heart, I'll tell you that. Everything changes unless you're incredibly wealthy, <laughs> then probably not much changes other than maybe you can go have more fun. I don't know. <laughs> but the rune for today is Urus, which is the second rune of the Elder Futhark. You can see the, uh, the legs or horns uh, pointing downward into creation. And what Urus is, it's not just manifestation because that's what it is. It's manifestation. But what they call it, and I read this, I'm going to get the, the rune grimoire out. It's called drizzle. And I just thought that was so cool. It's the forming force, the essence, the drizzle behind the force that actually manifests. So it's not even the force itself. You know, it's the, it's the forming force, the force behind the force in a sense, in a sense. So uh, it's the rune of changes. Um, it basically depicts the oryx, which is a, a large uh, bull of sorts, a large cow. Um, they don't, I don't think they exist anymore. Maybe somewhere someone has one, but, uh, but basically they, they sort of developed downward into cattle, maybe, I don't know. Or maybe they were just a breed of cattle, but they were very large. And uh, the oryx uh, is basically about strength. So you can kind of see, you can kind of see how that resembles, you know, if, if, if you kind of look at it really crudely, it kind of resembles a, a strong uh, bull or a strong uh, mastodon or a strong, you know, type of uh, a large beast, a beast of burden, even what we call a, a beast of burden that plows the fields, you know, 
but but basically when in when when Uruz appears, it's talking about our endurance to deal with change and and uh, to initiate circumstances as well. What are we going to manifest in the world today? So. In fact, how did we manifest our world? So maybe we can look at this as a look back on what we've done, you know, in terms of our life or where we're going even. So, but but basically when you're looking at Urus, the first couple of runes of the of the uh, Elder Futhark, you're just as with the Major Arcana and really with the entire Elder Futhark, you're looking at archetypal patterns of creation. But specifically with Urus, you're really looking at that as the primal essence of creation. And so if you're really thinking about that, then in terms of who we are here, the primal essence of our creation is spirit, isn't it? It's the creator within. And so really what Urus is telling us in terms of how we manifest our world, oh, well, something how we manifest our world, you know, we're looking at spirit, essentially, okay? We think that we're the ego, we think we're the personality, and and from day to day, it looks like that, doesn't it? But in truth, we're spirit informing that process. So that's basically, I think, what the message of today is, you know, as we're looking at new beginnings as we're looking at endings and beginnings, uh, particularly as we're coming upon the end of this year. Um, what are we doing to manifest? Are we manifesting from the, from, from the primal essence of who we are, or are we manifesting from ego? So are we concerned with only the tangible aspects of life? Are we concerned about who we are within all of that and how we relate to the rest of the world, how we relate to one another? You know, are we doing it in a way that's balanced and loving and, and having spirit inform that process? Or are we purely coming from ego, concerned with just material possessions and, and, and power and control and all of that? So that's kind of an interesting one for today, isn't it? I wanted to uh, uh, show you what I did on the blog yesterday. Uh, I, I did a blog post on, on creating charm bags and... Uh, there's some glare coming from there. Um, and I, I, I like to do things. I like to do charm bags. I like to do anything that's, I was talking about this the other day. I like to do container magic. So anything that can contain something <laughs> and then you can, you know, just sort of carry it around with you or, or stick it somewhere where it really can't be seen or something. But anyway, I talked about two different kinds. I talked about just a traditional bag and I like to use... Um, for my charm bags, I like to just use these little drawstring muslin bags because you can draw things on it. I did I did bind runes on both sides, although the essential oil seems to be uh, <laughs> coming through and uh, making some of it bleed through there. But I used a little too much essential oil. But you can put anything into it. You know, I, I put, uh, you know, crystals and, and herbs and, and uh, you know, like I say, essential oils and resins and powders and different things um, representing you know, whatever purpose. I mean, they can really be used for anything. They can be called Grigri bags or Mojo bags or charm bags, witch bags. I mean, they're called all kinds of things. They've been around for a long time. And what's nice about this one is you can just take and wrap it up and uh, and tie it. And I, I typically carry one in my purse uh, for one reason or another. This one I made um, for just emotional balance, you know, uh, Sometimes, you know, when you're in your crone years, sometimes emotional balance can be fleeting. And so um, this one has rosemary and eucalyptus and all of that. And, and, it, and you can just sort of breathe on it and smell it. And it, and it, it um, uh, just brings a sense of calm and balance to things. So this is a nice thing to have. And then the other kind that you can make um, looks more like, well, or did it fall on the floor? Maybe that's what fell on the floor. I wonder where it went. Oh, no, it's right here. Okay. Something fell. I guess it was a lighter that fell. Anyway, I heard something. Anyhow, anyhow this is the other type of, of, uh, of, of bag you can make. And all you do here... Now, I take a larger square of... Uh, of uh, fabric because I'm I just like a bigger bigger field to work on and so I don't know six to eight inches maybe 
square. And then it's nice because then you can just lay out everything that you want to put in there. I mean, you can put anything in here. You know, you can put, um, uh, I mean, you can put roots in it. You can, be, I mean, it's kind of a hoodoo thing. And so a lot of those folks are, you know, they practice conjure and they, they root working and all of that. And I do a little bit of that, but um, I don't practice hoodoo per se. Um, but I like a lot of the folk magic rituals. And so hoodoo is just a really, um, it's just nice. I, I like it. Um, I think I put a, a link to a hoodoo practitioner, um, uh, Stephanie Rose Bird. Uh, she wrote a book. Is it Sticks and Stones? Roots and Bones or something? I th some, something like that. I wish I could remember the name of it. I've read most of it. It's an excellent book, so I highly recommend that. Um, but, but this one is about uh, uh, clearing negative entities. You know, um, I, because I'm an empath, and negative entities tend to look for me. And so um, there's ways that you, you, can, you can go about, you know, cleansing and, and shielding and all of that to keep you know, sometimes it's referred to as arconic energies. And, and so they'll feed a little bit off of people, uh, vampiric energies. The last book I wrote is called When Vampires Attack. And, uh, and no, it's not that uh, it's not about actual vampires. It's about vampiric energy and the way it, it presents. I, t I did it from a psychological standpoint. So from passive aggression, you know, a psychopath, um, sociopath, uh, agenda oriented, uh, even just an empath that's that's out of control, uh, because in, even empaths can be, you know, pushy and intrusive with their energy. They get very, we get very curious because, you know, we feel it. And so we want to know what it is. And so we go feel in what we don't realize is when we do that, people actually feel that. And so it can be uncomfortable. And so sometimes empaths tend to make people uncomfortable simply because our energy is so intense and and we're you know, so open to everything, we blend with everything. And so people just feel us. And I, I don't think they really understand that that's what they're feeling. So they're just feeling uncomfortable, or noticed or something, you know, how you feel like when somebody's noticing you, and you can't see them, and you know, they're the, you know, they're there. <laughs> well, that's might be an empath. Or somebody else that's just being intrusive. You know, anybody can be intrusive with their energy, anyone can, uh, you just got to focus in, and there it goes. And so anyhow, um, I thought about, well, when I was thinking about, you know, emotional healing and all of that and emotional balance, I thought, well, why am I normally feeling that way? Well, it's because there's an entity around that's bothering me. So, you know, I'm making me just uncomfortable and nervous. So um, that's why I created this one. And so I used a black, I mean, it's kind of a, you know, multicolored black and gray, but I used this one and I tied it with a black piece of uh, uh, embroidery floss. What I like about embroidery, I also use hemp cord, but what I like about embroidery floss is that it comes in so many different colors. And so if you're going to, uh, now, of course, I didn't match my color, you know, with, with the muslin bag, but that's just the way that goes. You can, uh, you can actually, uh, when you're, when you're, when you're drawing things on the outside, you could, you could use a colored, different colored uh, uh, Sharpie pens to do that with, if you want to. Um, they work really well, um, but they do tend to bleed with us in too much essential oil. And that's what I like about using this because you can lay it out flat and you can actually see just so how much essential oil, if you're going to use any of that, how much you're getting in there with this, I can't ever see. And so I end up with too much. And so this is really, really stinky still. And this one, you know, the same sort of thing um, I used, uh, I think I used some, some obsidian and some jet, uh, there's some pine needles, um, some juniper berry. Uh, I, there might be some, oh, there's some sage. I, was there sage in this one? Yeah, I think there's some sage in this one. All for protection. Um, I also ha had made some um, spirit cleansing oils, uh, an oil that I use when I'm, when I'm trying to get rid of entities. Uh, and so I put some of that in there and also some pine oil and uh, something else. Well, one other oil, I can't think of what it was. But anyway, um, I think there's some copal maybe in here. I'll have to look. But anyway, I, I listed all of that on, on, the on the blog, on the blog post I did. It's called Charm Bag Construction, I think I called it. Charm Bag something or other. Anyway, um, I do this. I write up this stuff and I'm doing other things at the same time. So I don't always remember what I title things. And plus, I'll often change it throughout. I'll start out with one title and then I'll get to write and I'll think, no, that has nothing to do with what this is. And so I'll go back and I'll change it. And then by the time I'm done, maybe I go back to the original one. Maybe I've, I, maybe I've got, I'm on like my fourth or fifth, who knows? But uh, uh, the books I write are the same way. <laughs> I'll start out with one title. And, and I think on the novel right now, I don't know if I'm on the fifth title. 
but you know, I have to remember, okay, which one did I, fortunately I can remember by date because sometimes I'll change it a couple of times, like in a day because something else will hit me. It's like, Oh no, no, it should be that. But anyway, um, check this out if you're interested in learning how to make uh, charm bags. It's not particularly instructive because there's really not a whole lot to it. You know, you, I, I suggested, uh, you know, doing this one, you can, if you want to include like uh, uh, moon times or, or particular hours of the day or what have you, 6 p.m. on this one for mind, body, spirit uh, alignment. Uh, also on a Monday, maybe when, you know, because you're getting lunar energies and cycles and balance and emotions and all of that. So you might do something like this on a Monday, maybe at 6 p.m. It's nice to create these things when the times are are right, you know, so you might look at, uh, you know, a particular hour of the day, or you could maybe uh, for this one, you might want to look at a Saturn hour. So you might want to um, uh, consult the planetary hours tables uh, for when all of that is. Um, you'll have to ultimately create your own, though, because you have to know when the, uh, you know, sunrise and sunset is. And so to get an actual time. You know, so basically you're not looking at those tables and thinking 1 a.m., 2 a.m. You're looking at the first hour, second hour, third hour, fourth hour. So it's a little bit weird to look at it first. And, and it's sad because you do have to do a little math. But it just involves, you know, looking at uh, rise and sunrise and sunset. And then you can fill out both a.m. and p.m. tables from there. So anyhow, I know it, it's not fun to do math. But anyway, if you don't want to get into all that, you don't have to. All right. You can, but you can also look at mansions of the moon. I mean, any number of things to bring in correspondences uh, and to get the time just right and to get the power just right for these little uh, uh, charm or mojo or grigri bags. OK, so anyhow, check that out if you like. There's a link, I think, there to to uh, 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 that particular hoodoo practitioner, Stephanie Rose Bird's uh, book. I think I think there's a link to that. So you can check that out if you want to. Um, but anyway, they're just fun to do and uh, fun to carry around. And, and you know, this one, I, I, I just, I'll carry them both, you know, so competing, <laughs> competing essential oils, but that's okay. I don't care. Um, or I typically keep one of these either by my, kind of by my bed. I have kind of a headboard. And so uh, it's, it's kind of, it's like a bookcase headboard. So I can put stuff in back, back behind. And so that's nice. You can do that um, if you're bothered by entities at night when you sleep. Um, or if they just bother you like like they do me while I'm just sitting in my chair, you know, I'll feel something on my back. I'm like, oh, great. OK. And so you can keep something like this around and it tends to make them scatter. They're not really as willing to come up because you've you've said, look, this this is empowered to keep spirits away from me that 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 I don't want near me. It's one thing if I ask for it, if I don't and if I don't want any interaction, then go away. So you can you can hold these in your hand and you can focus your intention to to consecrate it and bless it. Uh, some say that you should uh, add more essential oils periodically to sort of feed it. Uh, some will say that you should have no fewer than three, no more than 13 in, uh, pieces in it. I, I don't know it, unless it's your tradition. I don't know that that matters, uh, but it, there may be something to that. Um, I had to laugh when I first saw the 13 because 13 is my number. So I thought, well, OK, um, I think I have eight in this one and nine in this one. So, you know, eight for strength. I don't know. Higher self-protection, higher self-protection, you know, uh, completion here. So it's like, let's let's com let's complete the emotional balance. So lots of ways to look at this, lots of ways to think about it. And all of that is what goes into the selection of ingredients. That go into the bag. So anyhow, um, it was fun to do and it was fun to write up about it. So if you want to check that out on the blog, it's over at imsteppingaside.com. Um, again, thank you so much for coming by today. If it's your first time, welcome. Click subscribe if you like. If you've been here before, thanks so much for coming back. I do appreciate it. I really like doing this stuff. It's a lot of fun. Anyhow, um, I'll let you all go for today. Be good to yourself. Be good to one another. We'll see you tomorrow. And blessed be.